big corporations in violation of a rule they negotiated censoring and labeling information not only from the people but from the government itself. I don't know if you know this. They they didn't just censor Trump. They censored the White House. That's our government. That's crazy. A corporation is censoring our government. And this president's standing up to them. I, you know, you have to, to, you have to take it for what it is. Um, sorry, it's the truth. Uh, China, who's been whose design of the world is, is that all of the Western economies, all the economies of the world would be tributary states to the Chinese empire. They're colonizing Africa. They've been colonizing our own country with the help of Democrats. China's taking control of the supply chains. We, we have to depend on China for our pharmaceuticals. It's crazy. How, how did that happen? How did that happen? They released this virus, the, the Wuhan virus. They released it. Um, around the world, but it it doesn't even spread to their major cities. How does China keep the virus from spreading to its cities uh, while uh, enabling the virus to spread to the world? It sounds like an act of war to me. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm not saying they created it in a lab. They don't have to. All they have to do is let it out and look what it's done. And yes, it was an overreaction. But it still would have made millions sick and would have killed thousands, even if we had kept the economy open. And that's their fault. They could have contained it, but they didn't. Um, and so the World Health, Org World Health Organization, which is being headed by a Maoist, Tidros, think about that. And they're colluding with China to hide the reality of this virus. This president standing up to China. It's the first president. I don't know. Well, you'd have to go back to Eisenhower to find a Republican like this who didn't like militarism, that was concerned about the, the war machine, who uh, understood the gravity of the situation with respect to uh, totalitarian communism or really totalitarian state socialism. And in China, of an Orwellian character, way more than the Soviet Union, um, China is the personification of postmodern rot. It is totalitarianism supreme. And we haven't, and, we, and, and so it's bad enough that we haven't stood up against China for our own national security interests. We haven't stood up against China for the sake of the Chinese people. 1.4 billion people live under the boot of the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, in the last just few days, you have a president that's um, done momentous things. So um, the Democrats, as I said in a, a Facebook post earlier today, they, you know, they've been left holding the globalist bag. The neoconservatives are abandoning the Republican Party. The populist turn has brought to the people a party that's actually going to represent uh, the interest of the working class. And it came from a very surprising direction, clearly. Um, you know, uh, the, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, is he's a businessman, but he's a patriot and he's a nationalist. He believes in America. He believes in free speech. He believes in religious freedom. He believes in all of the foundational values of this country. Um, the Democrats, the progressives, they're the globalists, they're the corporatists, they're the ones who have sold us out. They've been doing this since the 1960s. And um, you have to really think hard about this and read and study. Let the scales fall from your eyes. Uh, does that mean you vote Republican? I don't know. But um, if you check where your values are as an American, you can't support Democrats. They've sold out the country. They continue to divide us racially. That's a huge part of this. They, they teach people a history of the United States in which there's no progress, in which, in which we have not overcome and transcended 
You know, this was a country that abolished slavery in a world where slavery was practically universal. And th But the way they spin it is that slavery only happened here and that the United States is uniquely evil. They're anti-American. It's a Maoist philosophy, post-colonialism, post-modernism, uh, left-wing identitarianism. And then, of course, progressivism is the technocratic control of the people. Technocracy is the opposite of democracy. And democracy, the people choose. And technocracy, the elite choose. And what does progressivism represent? It represents rule of the elite. That's what it is. We're going to reform capitalism for the good of the people. That is, we're going to play a role in establishing the hegemonic domination of bourgeois ideology over the masses. That's what they're doing. And so populism is the people's movement. Populism is about being able to control your communities, control your school boards. right? And it also means economic self-sufficiency, having a nation. And that means Republican machinery, right? That the people can access and can improve society in terms of their interests. So I'm not telling you to vote Republican. But the Democrats, they're the globalists, they're the progressives, they're the corporatists, they're the technocrats, they're the elites. They worm their way into our university system, they worm their way into the uh, entertainment system, they're the cultural managers. The culture industry is run by the progressives, and they do not have the interests of the working class in mind. This is the globalist wing of the capitalist class. And it's odd to have to work with the nationalist wing of the capitalist class to work with the with the right wing populist in the grassroots. But they're the ones who believe in republicanism as a philosophy. They're the ones who believe in democracy. They're the ones that believe in liberalism, the values of free speech, secularism, of religious liberty. And so... Whatever issues, cultural issues people on the left may have with the right, they're the ones who are in a position to defend the machinery that will allow the working class to be able to advance its interest. The left is sold out. They're sold out. It's not left and right, ultimately. It's nationalism versus globalism. It's democracy versus technocracy. It's republicanism versus corporatism. And you have to decide on which side you line up. And our founding fathers, it's very clear what side they lined up on. They believed in democratic republicanism. They believed in liberalism and secularism. They were nationalists. 